Assalamualaikum, boleh dengar ke? Boleh.
Hello, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Doctor. Okay, can you all hear me? Yes, yes Doctor. Okay, so right now there are 151 participants already joined the session. Okay, uh, after this, I'm going to share with you all the Google form that you need to fill in the attendant uh, form. Lah. Okay, so uh, please be aware lah, okay, because I'm going to share the form in the uh, in the WhatsApp groups. So right now I have uh, share. I already share the Google form. Okay. So for those who are already here, please uh, uh, go to the form by clicking to the form and then uh, fill in the form. Okay. That is your job. You know, your first job. Can you all hear me? Please, someone respond. Yes, we can yes, hear you. Okay. Did you receive the Google form just now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I would like to confirm with Dr. Shamsi. Are you here already, Dr. Shamsi? Can you hear my voice? Yes, Dr. Saiful. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, Dr. Right. Dr. Shamsi. So uh, the number of participants still 151. Um, <clears throat> I hope more students will join the session. Okay, right now, in, uh, there are 99 students already response to the Google form. Okay, 104, 108. Okay, there are 129 students already respond to the Google form. 132. So it keep increasing. One hundred and thirty seven student, one hundred and thirty eight student already respond to the Google form. Okay, 141 student. One hundred and forty two student already respond to the Google form. Okay, there are 143 students already respond to the Google form. One hundred and forty four students already respond to, to the Google form. One hundred and forty five keep increasing the number. <coughs> okay. 
Okay, we give another uh, two to three minutes before we start our session for the other student to respond to the Google form. Okay, and right now it's still maintained at 145. 146 for the response to the Google form. Okay. Um, uh, I think uh, we can uh, start our session today. So I would like to invite uh, Dr. Shamsi to deliver a lecture regarding the gross anatomy of the heart. So uh, maybe right now Dr. Dr. Shamsi can uh, share her slide. Okay. Can you all see my slide? Yes. All right. Okay. Um, thank you, Dr. Saiful. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning to everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Shamsi Amalina from Anatomy Department, School of Medical Sciences, University of Science Malaysia, and I'm glad to be part of this study. So I hope everyone is doing well. So in this session, I will give a lecture on the gross anatomy of the heart and its blood supply. Okay. So these are the learning outcomes for this uh, topic. There are four learning outcomes to be covered in this topic. Okay. So basically what I'm going to cover, uh, I will talk about the location and position of the heart the precardium, the external and the internal features of the heart, the blood supply of the heart, and last but not least, the surface anatomy of the heart and also the heart valves. All right, so let me start this lecture with the pickup line. Uh, I'm lost. Can you give me directions to your heart? So if there is someone giving you a pickup line like this, maybe you can give him or her lecture on the gross anatomy of the heart. So this is the right way or the, the right direction to, to our heart. Okay, so let's start with the location and the position of the heart. So where is the heart is located? Basically, heart is located in the middle mediastinum. If you can see from this diagram, this is the sagittal section of the mediastinum where you can see the form uh, divisions of the mediastinum. Uh, this is the superior mediastinum, anterior, middle and posterior mediastinum. So the heart is located in the middle mediastinum and from the anterior view of the heart uh, of the thorax, the heart is located posterior to the sternum. Okay, this is the location of the heart. What about the heart position? The heart basically has a, an oblique position and relative to the midline of the, of the body or the, the thorax, the heart position, the two-third of the heart mass lies to the left, while one-third of the heart mass lies to the right. Okay, so let's talk about pericardium. What is pericardium? Pericardium is actually a fibrocerous sac that surrounds or envelope or enclose the heart and also the roots of the great vessels. So if you can see from this diagram, this is the sagittal section of the thorax. Okay, from the outermost layer, you can see uh, the fibrous pericardium. Okay, basically, uh, the precardium is composed of two layers, the fibrous precardium and the serous precardium. From the outermost layer of the precardium, this is the fibrous precardium. Okay, the fibrous precardium lines the middle mediastinum. Okay, in the next layer, you can see the red structure, the red uh, 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 the red layer of the pericardium, which is the serous pericardium, which further divided into two layers. The outer layer is the parietal layer of the serous pericardium. This parietal layer lines the inner surface of the fibrous pericardium, while the innermost layer is the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. 
This is the visceral layer of the serous pericardium, which is also known as epicardium. Okay, the epicardium uh, is closely uh, enveloped the heart, which is it cannot be separate from the heart because it's um, ad adherent to the uh, surface of the heart. Okay, uh, do you understand? Do you want me to repeat anything? So let's proceed with pericardial sinus. Okay. What is meant by sinus? Sinus can sinus in the context of the pericardial sinus means uh, it is a passage or space. Okay. So pericardial sinus is a passage that occurs due to the reflection of the serous pericardium. So the serous pericardium can be reflected upon itself and form a passage at the root of the great vessel. So the pericardial sinus, there are two types of the pericardial sinus. The first one is the transverse pericardial sinus. Okay. So this is transverse pericardial sinus which is located posterior to the ascending aorta and the pulmonary trunk and also anterior to the superior vena cover. Okay, another uh, type of the pericardial sinus is the oblique pericardial sinus. Oblique pericardial sinus is an inverted U-shaped recess that is located along the inferior vena cava and also the pulmonary veins. These are the pericardial sinus. In another context, sinus can mean something else which we will see later on. Okay. All right. So, are you clear with the pericardium? Do you want me to repeat anything on the pericardium? Clear? Okay, let's uh, proceed with the external features of the heart. Okay, so when we want to learn about the surface of the heart, you have to imagine the heart is like a tip of a pyramid or fallen of a pyramid. What, the, what does it mean? This is the usual shape of a pyramid where it has a pointed apex which located superior and a broad base which located inferior. This is the normal pyramid. But when you want to learn about heart, you have to imagine a pyramid like the tip of a pyramid. It becomes like this. So the apex or the pointed tip will be almost inferior while the base becomes almost superior. So the heart is literally imagined as a tip of a pyramid where the apex is over here and the base is almost in, uh, posterior or almost superior, lah, uh, which I will uh, explain in details. Okay, so imagine the heart like a tip of a pyramid. Okay, do you understand? All right, so there are five cardiac surfaces. Okay, so uh, from the anterior, there is the anterior surface. Inferior surface is the diaphragmatic surface. Okay, diaphragmatic surface is inferior surface. And the base is actually the posterior surface of the heart. Okay, do not uh, miss up, do not mistaken. Base is the posterior surface of the heart, while diaphragmatic is the inferior surface. Okay, and then you have the right and left pulmonary surface. So there are five cardiac surfaces. Okay, so we will see what are the structures that make up for each uh, surface. Okay, let's start with the anterior surface. So this is the anterior surface of the heart, which faces anteriorly, and it is mainly formed by the right ventricle. This is the right ventricle, and it is formed by a small part of the right atrium on the right, and left ventricle on the left. So mainly it is formed by the right ventricle. From the anterior surface, the right and left ventricle is separated by a sulcus or groove which is uh, known as anterior interventricular sulcus. I will talk about this sulcus in details later on. Okay. This is for the anterior surface. Next, let's uh, take a look at uh, the base of the heart. So base of the heart is quadrilateral and directed posteriorly. Okay, so mainly it is formed by the left atrium. Okay, 
uh, and a small part of the right atrium and also the proximal parts of great veins such as uh, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava and the four pulmonary veins. This is for the base of the heart. Okay. What about the diaphragmatic surface? It is known as diaphragmatic surface because it rests on the diaphragm. Okay, and it is mainly formed by the left ventricle and a small part of right ventricle. From the posterior surface of the heart, the left and right ventricle is separated by the groove here, which is known as posterior interventricular sarcus. Okay. While well, for the pulmonary surfaces, we have right pulmonary surfaces and left pulmonary surfaces. Right pulmonary surfaces, it faces the right lung and it is formed by the right atrium. And left pulmonary surfaces, it faces the left lung and it is formed by the left ventricle. Okay. What about the apex of the heart? This is the apex of the heart. It is directed anterior inferiorly to the left and it is formed by the inferior lateral part of the left ventricle. Okay, from the surface anatomy, uh, the apex is actually can be uh, can be seen or can be palpated from the fifth intercostal space. This is the fifth intercostal space. Okay, this is first, second, third, fourth and fifth uh, intercostal space at the mid-clavicular line. So you can palpate the apex. Okay, it is important to examine for the apex bit. Right? This is for the apex. Next, the cardiac borders. So before I move on to the cardiac borders, do you understand about the cardiac surfaces? Do you want me to repeat anything? Okay. Understand. Okay. Okay, all right, so let's proceed with the cardiac borders. Okay, so basically there are four cardiac borders, the superior border, inferior border, right and left border. All right, so, so the superior border is slightly oblique and is formed by the left atrium mainly and small part of the right atrium here, okay? While for the inferior border, it is nearly horizontal and it is formed by the right ventricle mainly and a small area of left ventricle at the apex area. For the right border, it is vertical and it is formed by the right atrium and also right ventricle. And left border is oblique and curved. It is formed by the left ventricle and also a small part of the left auricle here. Okay, so this is for the cardiac borders. Move on to the cardiac sulci. Okay, uh, there are three sulci uh, present on the heart. Okay, from the anterior uh, view, what you can see is a sulcus known as coronary sulcus here. Coronary or atrioventricular sulcus. Okay, so based on its name, atrioventricular sarcus, means that it separates the atria from the ventricles. Okay, it encircles the heart. So from the anterior view, or anterior surface, this is the anterior sarcus. While from the posterior view, this is the posterior sarcus, which contains several structures. I will explain later. All right. Another sulcus is the anterior and posterior interventricular sulci. From the anterior, what you can see is the anterior interventricular sulcus. Inter means in between. So anterior interventricular sulcus, it separates the right from the left ventricles anteriorly. For the posterior interventricular sulcus, it separates the left and right ventricles posteriorly. So, as its name, so you can easily identify the sarcus based on its name. All right, so they, these are the three sarci on the heart. Okay, so let's uh, see in the, the coronary sarcus. So, coronary sarcus, it encircles the heart. Okay, this is the coronary because as its name coronary means crown. So crown is, um, so it encircles 
uh, the heart, okay? And it separates the atria from the ventricles. So what are the structures that contains in the coronary sulcus? First, it contains the coronary arteries, okay? So we have the right coronary arteries here, left coronary artery, and this branch of the left coronary artery, which is the circumflex branch of left coronary artery. So this can be seen from the anterior surface of the heart. Okay. While from the post, uh, from the diaphragmatic surface, what you can see is the cardiac veins. Okay. So here, this is the great cardiac vein. This is the coronary sinus. And this is small cardiac vein. So did you remember that I mentioned sinus has several meanings? At the beginning of the lecture, sinus means passage or space. Here, sinus means vein. Okay. So these are the great, uh, uh, these are the cardiac veins that can be seen in the coronary sulcus uh, posteriorly. Okay. Uh, so the great cardiac vein, coronary sinus, and small cardiac vein. What about the anterior ventricular sulcus from the anterior surface of the heart? It separates the right ventricle and the left ventricle at the anterior surface of the heart. And it contains this branch, which is the anterior interventricular branch of left coronary artery, or also known as left anterior descending artery, or LAD. Okay? And another uh, structure is the great cardiac vein. So in the anterior interventricular sulcus, these two structures contains in the anterior interventricular sulcus. While for the posterior interventricular sulcus, okay, uh, it separates the right, uh, right and left ventricles on the posterior surface of the heart and it contains posterior interventricular branch of RCA or posterior descending branch, okay, PDA, posterior interventricular artery or posterior descending artery of right coronary artery and this is the middle cardiac vein, okay. So you have to remember what structures contain in each sulcus. All right. So are you clear with the external features of the heart? Do you want me to repeat anything? So let's proceed with the internal features of the heart. Okay. Basically, I think everyone knows that heart contains four chambers. So it comprises of two atria and two ventricles. So atrium is a receiving chambers of the heart and it will pump the blood to the ventricles and each atrium has a protruding auricle. I will show you this, the auricle later on. Auricle is like a, um, a extra space for the atrium because it is a receiving chambers. So it will increase the capacity of the atria, okay, the auricle. Well, for the ventricles, they are discharging chambers of the heart. They will pump the blood to the lungs and also to the systemic circulation. All right, let's take a look at the atrium, the right atrium. Okay, this is the open right atrium. This is right atrium. And uh, posterior to this structure, there will be the left atrium, which is separated by this structure. This is the interatrial septum, a wall that separates the right and left atrium. Okay, and if you can see on the wall on the interatrial septum, there is a depression here, which is known as fossa ovalis. Okay, what is fossa ovalis? It is an embryological remnant of the foramen ovale. Okay. So basically, the right atrium will receive the blood from the systemic circulation and also from the heart muscle itself, from the systemic circulation from the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava, and also from the heart muscle itself from the coronary sinus. Do you still remember what is coronary sinus? Okay, so basically, these are the openings on the right atrium. Okay, 
the uh, opening for the superior vena cava, opening for the inferior vena cava, and also opening for the coronary sinus. And another opening of the right atrium is this uh, orifice. This is a tricuspid orifice, okay, uh, which guarded by the tricuspid valve. These are the openings for the right atrium. Okay, so basically right atrium will pump the blood to the right ventricle. So looking at the internal features or internal structures of the right atrium, the right atrium has a rough part and smooth part. Okay, the anterior wall is rough and is it is composed of pectinate muscle. Okay, the muscular ridges on the anterior wall of the atrium is known as pectinate muscle. Okay, while the posterior wall is smooth. So internally, the rough and smooth parts of the right atrial wall is separated by a smooth muscular ridge, which is known as crista terminalis. This is at the in, uh, internal part, while externally, it is known as sacus terminalis cordis, the separation that uh, separates the anterior and posterior part of the uh, atrium is sacus terminalis cordis. Internally, it is known as crista terminalis. Do you understand? Or do you want me to repeat? Okay. So basically, the right auricle also is composed of pectinate muscle. Okay. All right. So the rough part is the pectinate muscle. Uh, the separation, the the apa, the 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 landmark of separation between the rough and smooth part is known as crista terminalis internally and sulcus terminalis externally. Okay, I hope you are uh, you can understand. While for the left atrium, this is the uh, left atrium. Okay, open left atrium. So basically, the left atrium will receive the blood from the pulmonary veins. There are four pulmonary veins on the right, and uh, there are two pulmonary veins on the right and two pulmonary veins on the left, which cannot be seen from this diagram. Okay, so the opening of the opening of the left atrium, there are five openings. The four openings of the pulmonary veins, the right and left, and also an opening through here, which is the mitral uh, orifice, which is guarded by the mitral valve. Okay, you will see another diagram that will show you mitral valve later. But for the left atrium, the walls are smooth. Okay, but also the wall of the left auricle also contains uh, pectinate muscle. But mainly, the left atrium is smooth compared to the right atrium. Right atrium has rough and smooth part, but for the left atrium, it is smooth. But for the left auricle, it is, uh, con uh, contains some pectinate muscle. Okay, are you clear? Right, so can we proceed with the ventricles? Okay, so let's proceed with the ventricle. So basically, there are two ventricles, right and left. So this is a diagram of open right ventricle. The right ventricle will pump the blood to the pulmonary trunk to the pulmonary circulation. Where the left ventricle, this is left ventricle, this is right ventricle, left ventricle will pump the blood to the ascending aorta. Okay? So the right and left ventricle is separated by an interventricular septum. Okay? Atrium has its interatrial septum, while the ventricle also has its interventricular septum. All right. So let's take a look on the right ventricle. This is an open right ventricle diagram. Uh, this is known as conus atriosus or infundibulum. Okay. This is uh, an outflow tract for the right ventricle, which is has smooth wall. This area is known as conus atriosus or infundibulum. Uh, right ventricle also contains um, like a muscular ridges, which is known as trabeculate carne. For the atrium, it is known as pectinate muscle, but for the ventricle, it is known as trabeculate carne. 
Okay. And also, they are papillary muscle. Okay, we will see in detail the papillary muscle, which is uh, connected to the, which is attached to this fibrous cord, which is known as cordae tendini. Cordae tendini is a fibrous cord which attached at the cups of the atrioventricular uh, valve to the papillary muscle. Okay. All right. So, there are three papillary muscles in the right ventricles. They are anterior papillary muscle, posterior papillary muscle, and septal papillary muscle. This is the interventricular septum. So, anterior, posterior, and septal papillary muscle. And there is a specialized trabeculum, which is known as moderator vent or septal uh, septal marginal trabecula is a specialized uh, trabeculum that forms a bridge between the lower portion of the interventricular septum and the base of the anterior papillary muscle. This moderator band contains a specialized structure, part of the conductive system of the heart, which is the right bundle branch. Okay. The moderator band contains right bundle branch. All right. What about the left ventricle? Basically, uh, left ventricle has thicker wall compared to the right ventricle because it needs more, uh, more force. Okay, more, more pumping force because it needs to pump the blood to the systemic circulation. Okay. Left ventricle also has similar structure uh, to, uh, like right ventricle, but the trabecular carnea in left ventricle are more fine and delicate compared to the right ventricle. As you can see from this diagram, the trabecular carnea is more fine and delicate compared to the right ventricle. You know, this is the right ventricle. Okay. And the anterior Papillary muscle and posterior papillary muscle are usually found in left ventricle and they are larger. Okay, there are only two papillary muscles in left ventricle and they are larger. Okay, what about the heart valves? Okay, the heart valve, it ensures the blood flow in one direction. There are two types of heart valve, which are the atrioventricular valve which located between the atria and ventricles. So they are tricuspid valve and mitral valve. Okay. And the other types of the heart valve is the semilunar valve, which contains semilunar cups. They are aortic valve and pulmonary valve. Right. So let's take a look at the atrioventricular valve. The atrioventricular valve, they are tricuspid valve and mitral valve okay this is tricuspid valve in between the right atrium and right ventricle and mitral valve between the left atrium and left ventricle so every valve prevents the bad flow of the blood back into the atrium when the ventricle contracts and this cordae tendini anchor the av valve to the papillary muscles so it prevents prolapse of the valve into the atrium okay so the tricuspid valve. This is heart in. Uh, this is uh, this diagram is a heart in systo viewed from the base, and we remove the atria. We view from the base. This is the tricuspid valve. This is mitral valve. Okay. So the tricuspid valve has three cups. Okay. Uh, all the flats. So this is anterior cups, posterior cups, and septal cups which the base is secured by a fibrous ring. This is the fibrous ring, okay? Uh, which maintain the integrity or the shape of the uh, opening of the valve, right? While for the mitral valve, it has two cups, uh, which also uh, secured to the fibrous ring. This is the anterior cups and this is the posterior cups, okay? This is the left fibrous ring of the mitral valve. Alright, so are you clear so far? Do you want me to repeat at any point? No? Alright, so let's proceed with the semilunar valve. 
So the semilunar also prevent bad flow of the uh, blood. So it prevent bad flow of the blood back into the back of the ventricles. So there are two semilunar valve, which is the pulmonary valve, okay, between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk, and aortic valve in between the left ventricle and the ascending aorta, okay. This uh, pulmonary and aortic valve is known as semilunar valve. Uh, what makes it different from the atrioventricular valve, the, the tricuspid and mitral valve, is that the semilunar valve has no cordae tendini. Okay, and they has uh, they have three cups. All right. So let's take some break, but I want to give you another pickup line. So are you a coronary artery? Because you are right all around my heart. Okay. So can we proceed with the blood supply of the heart? Okay, so let's proceed with the blood supply of heart. Or do you have any questions so far? Uh, why are you so sad, Annabelle? <laughs> okay, can we proceed to the blood supply of the heart? Okay, let's proceed with the blood supply of the heart. So basically, any blood supply to the heart or to an organ, they have arterial and venous uh, drainage, okay? So arterial supply of the heart means the coronary arteries. We have right coronary artery and left coronary artery. Right and left coronary artery, they arise from the right aortic sinus and left aortic sinus. What is meant by right and left aortic sinus. Okay, sinus here means space, okay? So this is, uh, this diagram shows you the open aortic valve, okay? This is open aortic valve, when you can see the cups of the aortic valve. So the aortic sinus means a dilatation or space in between the wall of the ascending aorta. This is the ascending aorta, the wall of ascending aorta and the cups of the aortic valve. So the space is this space and there is an opening on the inside the space which is the origin for the right and left coronary artery. So this is the right aortic sinus, this is the left aortic sinus. Okay, do you understand what is meant by right and left aortic sinus? Or do you want me to repeat? Okay, let me repeat. Okay, aortic sinus means a dilatation, okay, in between the wall of the ascending aorta. Okay, this is the ascending aorta and the cups of the aortic valve. So, this is space here. The space, inside the space, there is an opening for the origin of the right and left coronary artery. Okay, do you understand? Can anybody respond? Do you understand what is meant by the right and left aortic sinus? Okay, all right, good. Uh, do you have any question? No? All right, okay. So this is for the coronary arteries. What about the venous drainage? Okay, there are three cardiac veins. They are coronary sinus, they are anterior cardiac veins, and the uh, vena veni cordis minimi. Okay, the coronary sinus, it is the largest vein and it receives three tributaries, great, middle, and small cardiac veins. Okay, the anterior cardiac vein is consists three consists of three to four small veins, while the vena cordis minimi, it is uh, numerous, they are the smallest uh, cardiac veins. All right, so let's take a look in detail for the right coronary artery first let's take a look at the cause of the right coronary artery this is the sternal costal surface or the anterior surface or anterior view of the heart okay so this is the right coronary artery it emerged from the uh, ascending aorta it emerged from the right aortic sinus on the wall, on the, between the wall of the ascending aorta and the cups of the aortic valve, okay, it emerged from here. So it emerged from the root of the pulmonary trunk 
and the right auricle. Okay, he emerged from the root of the pulmonary trunk. This is the pulmonary trunk and the right auricle. And then it descends in the right or in the right anterior coronary sulcus. Okay, it descends in the right anterior coronary sulcus. And it wins around. Okay, it wins around the inferior border of the heart to reach the diaphragmatic surface of the heart. Okay, I repeat. The right coronary artery, it emerged from the pulmonary trunk from its origin in the right aortic sinus. It uh, passes in between the root of pulmonary trunk and the right auricle. And then it descends in the right anterior coronary sulcus. And at the inferior border of the heart, it wins around to reach the diaphragmatic surface of the heart. So from the diaphragmatic surface, this is the right coronary artery, okay? It runs to the left in the right posterior coronary sulcus until it reaches the posterior interventricular sulcus and it gives off this one branch. This is the posterior interventricular branch, okay? And also it will give off one branch here. This is the right marginal branch, okay? This is also right marginal branch. Okay, do you understand the cause of the right coronary artery? Okay, do you want me to repeat? No? Okay, good. Alright, so what about the branches of the right coronary artery? First is the nodal branch to the SA node or SA nodal branch. Okay, this is the SA nodal branch. Second is the infundibular or cornus branch. Third one is the right marginal branch. This is from the posterior. This is the three, the three artery can be seen from the anterior surface. Okay, the next arteries that I will explain, this is actually from the posterior. Okay, uh, I hope you are not confused from this diagram. But this artery, uh, these three arteries are uh, from the anterior. And if you can see the faded structure, the faded artery is actually the posterior, from the posterior. Okay? So this is the posterior interventricular or posterior descending branch or artery. This one is the right posterior lateral branch. And this one is nodal branch to AV node. Okay? Do you understand? Right. So can we proceed with the left coronary artery? Can? Okay. If you want me to repeat anything, you can stop me at any point. Okay. So let's proceed with the left coronary artery, the cause of the left coronary artery from the external costal space. This is the left coronary artery. So it emerged from the root of the pulmonary trunk and left auricle. This is the left auricle. Okay, and then it will give one branch here, which is the anterior interventricular branch. Okay. And then it will continue as circumflex branch. This is circumflex branch of the LCA and it will run in the left anterior coronary sulcus. So from the diaphragmatic surface, here, the LCA, it wins around the left coronary border and runs in the posterior coronary sulcus. So near the posterior uh, interventricular sulcus, it will anastomose with the uh, right coronary artery, with the right coronary artery. This is the right coronary artery, the branches of the right coronary artery. Okay. The anterior... This is the anterior interventricular branch. We'll also anastomose with the posterior interventricular branch of the LCA. You will see the branches of the left coronary artery. So the branches of the left coronary artery are first one from the anterior, the anterior interventricular artery or LAD, left anterior descending branch. The circumflex branch, okay, circumflex branch. This one is known as left marginal branch. And this one is the posterior lateral 
branches to the left ventricle. This one is from the anterior and this one is from the posterior. So the anterior interventricular branch of left coronary artery will anastomose with the posterior interventricular branch of the right coronary artery. Okay. Uh, right. Okay, we have finished with the arterial supply. Let's uh, proceed with the venous drainage, the cardiac veins. So the first one is the coronary sinus. The coronary sinus can be seen from the diaphragmatic surface of the heart. The biggest uh, vein here, this is the coronary sinus. It runs in the left posterior coronary sulcus and it will empties in the right atrium here. Okay. So if you can still remember at the beginning of the lecture, I've mentioned about the opening of the uh, right atrium. I've mentioned about the opening of the coronary sinus. Okay, you can see the opening of the coronary sinus in the right atrium. So uh, the coronary sinus, it received three tributaries. The first one is the great cardiac vein. This is great cardiac veins, which accompanies the anterior interventricular artery. And it enter uh, the coronary sinus at the left end of the coronary sinus. Okay. Next one is the middle cardiac vein. This is middle cardiac vein which accompanies the posterior interventricular artery. Okay. And it enters at the middle part of the coronary sinus. While for the third one is the small cardiac vein. This is the small cardiac vein. It runs with the right coronary artery in the right posterior coronary sulcus and it enters at the right end of the coronary sulcus of the uh, coronary sinus. Sorry, it enters the right end of the coronary sinus. Okay. All right. So the great cardiac vein, it enters the coronary sinus from the left middle it enters at the middle part of the coronary sinus while the small cardiac vein uh, enter the right end of the coronary sinus and eventually the whole coronary sinus will empty into the right atrium okay i hope you are clear this is for the coronary sinus next one is the anterior cardiac vein so anterior cardiac veins these are the anterior cardiac veins Okay, which can be seen from the anterior surface of the heart. There are three to four small veins that run parallel on the anterior wall of the right ventricles. And it opens directly into the right atrium at its anterior wall. While for the vena veni cordis minimi, which is not shown in this uh, diagram, uh, they are very minute, very small veins on the wall of the heart. So they will open directly into the heart chambers okay so are uh, you clear do you want me to repeat so can we proceed with the last part of the lecture which is the surface anatomy of the heart and the heart valve all right so let's take a look at the surface anatomy of the heart first one okay first one is the upper margin of the heart this is the third costal cartilage. Okay, this is first, second, and third costal cartilage. So the upper margin of the heart extends from the third costal cartilage on the right side of the sternum to the second intercostal space of the left side of the sternum. This is first, second intercostal space. This is first, second, and third costal cartilage. Okay, this is the upper margin of the heart. What about the right margin of the heart? Right margin of the heart extends from the right third costal cartilage to the right uh, sixth costal cartilage. Okay, this is third, fourth, fifth and sixth costal cartilage. So this is the right margin of the heart. What about the left margin of the heart? The left margin of the heart extends from the second intercostal space to the apex. What about the apex? Okay, apex I've mentioned uh, at the beginning of the lecture. Apex is located at the fifth intercostal space. This is fifth. This is first, second, third, fourth, and fifth intercostal space at the mid clavicular line. Okay. 
this is, uh, okay what about the lower margin of the heart it extends from the sternal edge of the six coaster cartilage to the apex okay so the apex is the fifth intercostal space of the uh, mid clavicular line so this is the surface anatomy of the heart what about the surface anatomy of the heart valve okay so there are four heart valves uh the first one uh the pulmonary sound that can be heard over the pulmonary uh, valve which is at the left second costal cartilage okay left second costal cartilage where you can uh, hear the pulmonary sound for the apex bit the apex is from the mitral valve okay mitral valve sound uh, can be heard over the apex which is at the left fifth intercostal space at the mid clavicular line what about the tricuspid valve sound the tricuspid valve sound can be heard over left six costal cartilage okay left six costal cartilage and the last one is the outic sound from the outic valve that can be heard over the right third costal cartilage okay all right so do you have any question or do you want me to repeat anything i think this is the end of the lecture do you have any question no so this is the last um, pickup line from me so from the altar to the apex i love you with my whole heart thank you for your attention and cooperation uh, yeah see you tomorrow for the practical okay, okay thank you dr shamsi for the uh, best presentation just now Okay, uh, for the rest, I would like to, uh, for you all to open up your uh, webcam in case if you able to open up your webcam because I need to take a picture for our session today. Okay, uh, yeah. Thank you for attending the sessions. Well done, so we have finished our first sessions today. Okay. Okay, now, uh, now is the first frame. I so I'm going to take a picture. Next page. Okay. Okay, and then next page. Okay. Uh, last and this is the second last page i think okay okay i think uh that's all uh from me the rest i think they cannot open up their webcam okay uh just for the announcements today you're going to have another session the uh, sessions number two so uh, there are two separate groups. The first group, uh, the group A will be with Dr. Shamsi and the group B will be the, with me. Okay, so I'm going to uh, share with you all later the Webex link. So just be aware lah, uh, any links that I provide in the Webex lah, in the uh, WhatsApp groups. Okay, that's all I think for me. Thank you for your participation and also for your, for your attendance for this morning session. Thank you. See you all tomorrow. Thank you, doctor. 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 Thank you, doctor.